Hello dear students, welcome back. This is Jocelyn Ayer. Now I am going to continue lesson the heavenly parasol. In part 1 and part 2 we have discussed many things. We discussed how Megavahana became the king and uh, you know in the second part, in first part we learned how Megavahana oh, I mean, uh, married uh, Amrita Prabha, a great beauty. In the second part we learned how he became the ruler of uh, the I mean uh, the whole I mean how he tried to become the ruler of the whole world. His intention was not to conquer to rule like how uh, the uh, empress like Alexander did. He did not uh, want to conquer the places to rule them. Instead, he wanted to conquer the places to impose the law. What law? The law against killing of living things. Okay, law against the killing of living beings okay so he was successful in capturing many you know kingdoms neighboring kingdoms and you know uh, other kingdoms as well and he imposed this law his ambition was to completely stop the sacrifice of living things and uh, we you know we came to know in the second part that uh, he happened to see a group of barbarians who were trying to sacrifice a man and the reason for reason for the sacrifice was to save the life of the son of the leader of that barbarian troop got it so uh, the you know uh, we, we studied that uh, in the second part we learned that megavana was in a confusion he did not know whom to save to save the victim the man who was about to be sacrificed or the boy who had fallen prey to a disease. Let us see what happens here. The victim sat crying on the ground, a look of terror on his face. Tears fell from the barbarian's eyes. Sir, tell me what to do, he cried. I cannot see my son suffer this way. See, on one side, the barber is, uh, sorry, barbarian is crying. On the other side, son, sorry, the victim was about to be, you know, the, whom the barbarian tried to kill. Even he was crying. On one side, barbarian. On the other side, the victim. Both are crying. Okay, the barbarian, you know, the barbarian said, Sir, tell me what to do. Okay, I cannot see my son. He said, I cannot see my son suffering. Please do, do something fast. If I don't kill the man, my son would die. So, the king was in great confusion. See what he decided. The king spoke firmly. Do not be distressed. I will save your son as well as this victim. I offer my body in sacrifice to Chandika. Kill me, O barbarian. May these two persons live. See how great this king is he said don't kill this man don't kill the victim you kill me the king told the barbarian to kill him let both live let your son also live let the victim also live please do kill me the king requested the barbarian to take his body as sacrifice so what happens here the barbarian struggling between incredulity and fear took a step backwards. As soon as the barbarian heard these words, he just, you know, he, he went backwards. He took a step backward. He went back. Okay. See, the barbarian struggling between incredulity. Incredulity means showing disbelief. Actually, he had to agree the words of the king. But he was not ready to do so. See why? Sir, you are the king. Your life should be protected at all times. Do not pity this victim. Let him die. His life is of no significance. The king, and when the king said to take his body as sacrifice, to kill him as sacrifice, barbarian stepped backwards. He was not ready to obey the orders of the king. He said, your life is very important, sir. Your life must be saved at all times. Don't pity on this victim. Let him die. See what the king said. The king shook his head impatiently like this. He said, no. Shook his head impatiently. If I can use my body to stop a killing, why should I not? 
do not speak another word kill me but king said no no if my body can save others let it be done please do kill me the king requested the barbarian to kill him see to this what happens here the barbarian hung his head and made no move to take his word but the barbarian did not obey he just put his head down and he was not ready to take the orders of the king he did not accept the proposal put before him by the king if you cannot bring yourself to strike at me i will use my own sword for the purpose so saying the king drew out his sword king said if you don't kill me i'll kill myself saying this the king removed his sword see what happens the barbarian and the victim watched in horror they were extremely in horror barbarian as well as the victim because the king took his own sword and he was about to chop his head see as megavana was about to strike himself his head was covered with divine flowers of ex exquisite color and perfume and someone held his arm arm means hand megavana removed his sword and he was about to strike when he was about to strike some someone held his hand someone stopped him and a garland was seen on his neck see i repeat the barbarian the victim watched in horror as megavana was about to strike himself his head was covered with divine flowers of exquisite exquisite extremely beautiful color and perfume and someone held his arm see was that the king world world means turned the king turned around in surprise and beheld a person of heavenly appearance you know you know somebody held his hand when he turned when megavana turned he could see a man of divinely appearance you see who was it then he realized that the barbarian the victim and the ailing boy had vanished he turned back to see who held his hand and when he turned again in, uh, when he looked in front of him there was no one there was no barbarian there was no victim there was no ailing boy everyone disappeared see why a divine being addressed the bewildering king bewildering means confused the king was totally confused he did not know what was happening there because somebody held his hand he turned and when he looked in front of, there was no one in front of him he was confused see and to clear his confusion a divine voice spoke see, who was the divine what was the divine voice i am varuna the lord of the seas i have come to reclaim reclaim means take back reclaim my parasol that was carried away from my town by the powerful bauma the father of your father in law the power which held his hand back was lord varuna okay lord varuna spoke he said lord i mean the voice i mean a divine being addressed okay the bevel drinking it said i am varuna the voice said that it was varuna lord of the seas and varuna had come to reclaim reclaim means take back the parasol actually the parasol belonged to varuna and the parasol which belonged to varuna was stolen by bauma bauma was the father of megavana's father in law that is amrita amrita prabhas grandfather okay megava say the bauma was the father of megavana's father in law okay varuna varuna told him that bauma had stolen the parasol he has powers to quell calamities to quell calamities in my land quell means put an end to stop the calamities disasters in my land i created this illusion to test your nobility of mind you are truly compassionate and noble varuna said i wanted to test your nobility i wanted to know how noble you are so i made this arrangement of victim barbarians and all in fact you are truly noble and compassionate okay see megavana bowed before the divine being and returned the parasol reverently to him reverently means most respectfully remember always wherever Me megavana went with him the parasol also traveled the parasol continuously kept on giving shade to him but lord varuna told him that it was it belonged to him it was stolen by bauma so he had come in, in fact to reclaim to take take the parasol back so most respectfully megavana gave the parasol to lord varuna see then he asked hesitantly hesitantly okay he asked hesitantly o oh lord encouraged by your praise i wish to ask for a boon 
Megawana, after you know, uh, giving the parasol back, he requested for a boon. See what, what boon? I need help to cross the waters so that I may conquer the islands. What islands? Lanka. Yes. So he requested a boon. A boon to cross. He want he, you know, he want, he requested uh, Varuna to help him to cross the help him cross the water so that he can reach the island Lanka. See what happened? Varuna smiled. So be it. Tatastu. So be it, he said, okay, fine. When you desire to cross the ocean, I will pull away the water. Then he disappeared with the parasol. So the boon was granted and Lord Varuna disappeared. But before disappearing, Varuna told Megawana, whenever you want to cross the ocean, I will pull the water away. The following day, the next day, Megawana assembled his troops on the shore. The troops were having rest, you know. So the following day, the next day, he assembled all his troops on the shore. The waters swelled. The waters, you know, uh, it became greater intensity. Swell means become greater intensity. The water swelled and crashed onto the sand and the soldiers trembled at its might. The water, you know, raised and crashed down. And on seeing this, uh, seeing the power of water, the soldiers trembled. They shivered. Megavahana rode forward and plunged into the foaming ocean. The ocean was foaming. Okay, into the foaming ocean, Megavahana jumped first. See, all at once, all at once, the waters parted and the king, smiling at his troops' astonishment, beckoned them to follow him. So, the water swelled first. It rose and it crashed. On seeing this, the soldiers were, you know, they, they uh, trembled. Okay, okay. They trembled at the power of the water. But Megavana did not tremble. He jumped into the foaming ocean. As soon as he jumped, the water parted. And when the water parted, all the soldiers and ministers assembled there were in astonishment. They were surprised. And he beckoned them. Beckoned means he gave a signal to come, to follow him. Just gave a signal. Beckon means make a gesture with hand. Like this. Gesture. Come. Okay. He, he gave a gesture to the soldiers and his uh, ministers to follow him. In this wondrous manner, Megavana reached Lanka and won over its king Vibhishana in the form of friendship. He did not fight with Vibhishana, the king of uh, the demon king. Vibhishana was the demon king of Lanka. He transformed Vibhishana without any fight and made Vibhishana accept the law. Which law? Law against killing living things. Even Vibhishana, the demon king, even the demons accepted to follow the rule. That was the nobility of Megavahana. Through his noble character, he transformed the heart of the demons to accept peace. Got the point, dear students? They became friends in Lanka and, you know, India, I mean, uh, Megavahana became friends. Got the point, dear students? Finally, on returning home, Amrita Prabha welcomed him and then looked around in confusion. Why looked around in confusion? Because there was no parasol. Okay, parasol was always by his side. But when he reached after the conquest of Lanka, there was no parasol. She was confused. Where is the parasol, my lord? She asked. It never leaves your side. That's what, you know, it never, it never leaves his side. She asked, where is the parasol? Where is the, where is the parasol? Okay, she was shocked to see Megavana alone without his parasol. See, it never was mine to keep. Megavana replied, it was, it was never mine to keep. He answered, yet the mark of favor shown to me by its divine owner will guide me through my life. He said it was never mine to keep. It, he, he explained the story behind that parasol. He said it was never mine, but I have been granted a boon by its owner. Who is the owner? Lord Varuna. I am sure his boon will be with me throughout my life. Okay, finally, as he spoke, the skies darkened. As if the parasol was casting its shadow over him, even from its heavenly abode. It is already in the heaven with Varuna. When he was explaining, the con when he was explaining his wife, Amrita Prabha, that the parasol 
did not belong to him it belonged to varuna so varuna has given him a boon that boon would help him throughout his life when he was ex talk i mean explain i mean when he was telling this thing, these words all of a sudden there was you know see the as he spoke the sky is darkened the sky is darkened okay the sky is darkened as if the parasol was casting its shadow from the heaven okay so when he was talking to his wife suddenly the sky darkened and they felt as if the parasol was casting its shadow from its heavenly abode from heaven this is how a noble prince becomes the supreme power of the whole world and after i mean after he became the king of kashmir his intention was to conquer the whole world not with the intention of ruling you know i mean uh, ruling it in fact he wanted to conquer the world to impose the law which law a law which prohibited killing of and living things in this way during the reign rule of uh, you know uh, megavahana the subjects the people lived happily okay so our nobility will help us gain blessings from the almighty god so try to be noble throughout your life okay dear students i hope you have understood this story if you have any comments you can put them in the comment box if you have any doubts you can call me this is my personal number don't go out dear students stay home stay safe i'll be back with a new lesson bye